All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Texags High School Football Show. I'm Ryan Broniger with my colleague and coworker Jason Howe up there in DFW as myself and everybody else that covers high school football across the state of Texas gets ready to head to the Metroplex this weekend for the state championships. What a semifinal round we had. We had blowouts, we had nail biters, and it all culminates, the season all culminates this coming weekend, starting on actually Wednesday with the small schools and running all the way through Saturday with the Texas High School Football Championship. So Jason, uh, we wanna quickly go through last week, the semifinal round so that we can get yeah. to um, all these championship games and championship picks and maybe look back at what we got wrong and got what we got right at the onset of these playoffs. So really quickly, recap us there in uh, Dallas. Well, I tell you what, the, the biggest shocker for me was uh, seeing Duncanville uh, just not just beat South Lake, but but run them out, man. They uh, they got it going, and um, you know they uh, they were able to pull away for a big win uh, there in in the six A bracket. Uh, that uh, I don't I don't know if a lot of people had that one penciled in. I think a lot of people had South Lake advancing there. Uh, but they they pull away for for the big win there, and then um, and then you had Geyer, uh taking on Tomball, uh, and uh, they they uh, they were tested a bit, but uh, but Geyer is able to to end that Tomball winning streak in the playoffs and, and advance um, to to face uh, to face Westlake um, uh, the the. I, I think in, in 5A, you got South Oak Cliff in, in uh, Division uh, 2 that, uh, that they, they ran away from Lubbock Cooper. Uh, and uh, and, and that, that South Oak Cliff story is just uh, – it, it may be one of the best of the – it is the best uh, of the Texas high school football season to me so far, yeah, especially if they can uh, come away with the state championship. And then – Mansfield Summit, um, man, they they put together a nice run, um, but uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to steal too much of your thunder. But uh, we just know College Station's doing some work. They ran into a bus all there. Uh, yeah, and summit. I thought yeah, looking at yeah, Mansfield Summit, so. they're very physical, very yeah. well coached. Uh, that you know, everybody had pointed to the Denton Ryan College Station game the mm -hmm. week before as kind of the pinnacle game in. 5A D1 across the state and Mansfield Summit came in and they were not intimidated. College Station went up 14 to nothing really quick. Mm -hmm. Mansfield Summit fights back to tie it. Uh, and then the Marquise Collins show took over. And mm -hmm. uh, as he's done so often in this playoffs, they what a run. Put his legs to a to a 28 to 21 victory. Mansfield Summit scores kind of they scored very late and then failed on the onside kick and College Station ran out the clock. And then on Saturday, I uh, drove out to Round Rock to watch mm -hmm. uh, North Shore take on Lake Travis and and North Shore. Is, everybody <laughs> talks about North Shore and Duncanville. There, everybody was talking about, you know, are these teams as good as the ones in the past? And with North Shore graduating so many guys like Shad Banks and Demetrius Davis and uh, uh, Jaden Roberts, all those guys they had last year, uh, would they be able to make a return run now with a freshman quarterback? And I tell you what, that freshman quarterback answered that question with a big yes. I this was going to say, is, man, uh, uh, some some of these guys may not be as well known, but right. uh, they are definitely either going to be well known or uh, uh, they need to be because yeah, these are two really good teams. North Shore is loaded in the underclass. I mean, yeah. everybody knows the names of Denver Harris mm -hmm. uh, as seniors, but Kayla Bailey, their freshman quarterback, uh, David Amador, junior receiver, Jacoby Davis, junior cornerback. Uh, Chris Ross committed to Texas as a senior there. He kind of underappreciated Houston defensive uh, player of the year, according to the touchdown club there. But man, it was no contest. I think it was 14 to 14 at one point. <laughs> and then North Shore runs off 35 straight. Um, freshman quarterback, Kayla Bailey, like I said, just incredible with his arms and his legs. I think he scored five total touchdowns, four or five total touchdowns. Mm -hmm. um, so he will get the Duncanville Panthers in a, I don't know what you – not a repeat or a third-time repeat. Uh, three out of the last four years has been North Shore yeah. and Duncanville there in 6A Division One, And I, you kind of glossed over – Yeah. You said a name, Jason, but we kind of just glossed over them talking about this coming weekend. 
But what Austin Westlake did to Katie, oh. gracious yeah. sakes. It's hard not no. to say that Austin Westlake is the best team in the state. And they're in 6AD2. They're probably the best uh, team. Absolutely. I, I think so. As far as just complete uh, and just all around, I, I think they bring it all to the table. They're going to be uh, – that, that's going to be a tough matchup. What they did to Katie was impressive. Uh, you, you don't do that to Katie. And, Nobody uh, knows. And, uh, yeah, they uh, they just dealt them an L. They're, they're not used to receiving in a, in a fashion they're not ever getting, you know. So, right, well, let's, uh, yeah. let's get to these picks. So, we don't want to yeah. – we're obviously busy. It's the final week of the recruiting <laughs> calendar, so we're chasing recruiting stuff. So, Who put we're going to get right to these schedule, picks, huh? and we're going to pick all of them, Jason. Not, yeah, not, right. not the six, man. But we're going right. to start in 2A Division Two. Stratford against Falls City. I'll go ahead and pick. This is Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Obviously, all these games are at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington. (laughs) Falls City against Stratford. I'm taking Falls City because they beat Mart in the last round. And that's all I'm going on. Anytime you've got a win against Mart on your playoff resume, I like your chances in the next round. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty close with you there. But uh, I I think I'm actually going to go with Stratford. I had them uh, losing last round, but uh, they – what they did, they uh, I think it was Albany that they took out, and uh, they did it in a pretty convincing fashion. So, uh, hey, why not? Uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll split this one. I'll go Stratford. All right, two A Division One. Holly, who had a nail biter last week against Marlin, against the Shiner Comanches, who have blown the doors off of everybody in the playoffs <laughs> until they got to the Timpson Bears out of East Texas last week. Uh, great story from Holly, but. I'm taking Shiner. The Brooks brothers, Dalton and Doug, have been sensational. Probably the two best players in 2A in the state. Yeah. At, well, I, I, yeah, absolutely. Shiner. Uh, Shiner's the pick. Uh, Timpson gave them all they wanted, like you said. That that may end up being the the best matchup they see uh, in, in the playoffs. 3A Division Two, a battle of two teams that we have both seen for a long time. I know you went and saw this team. Yeah. A lot of the teams earlier this year when they played Pilot That's Point, but familiar. Gunter undefeated, taking on undefeated Franklin. This game is at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. I picked Franklin with my mortal lock to start the playoffs <laughs> as the underclass team or the small school team that I thought would uh, have the best chance of winning the state championship. So I'm not going to go away from that. They yeah. doubled up Wascom, a really good Wascom team last week, and I'm going to go with the Franklin Lions. Well, I don't know how they're going to do it, uh, but I'm going to go with Gunter. Uh, they just just keep on rolling. And, Who's your and guy keep there, on Ethan Sloan? Points. Uh, well, Ethan Sloan. Hutt Graham is the quarterback. He's a safety. He's a punter. I think punt returns. He's going to be a fun one to watch. He, I think he's still committed to Tech. He committed to Tech under Coach Wells. Uh, and uh, just does uh, – he's a, he's one of those jack-of-all-trade guys uh, that, that he'll he'll be fun to watch. But, yeah, that that's going to be a fun matchup. All right, well, give me Bryson Washington, Devin Hidrago, <laughs> Marcus Wade, Malcolm Murphy. Uh, hey. Franklin's loaded. And they've got yeah. legitimately probably for a 3 D 2 they might have six Division One players on that team when you look at the entire roster. Remember the name Jaden Jackson, freshman running back. He's a big dude. All right, 3A Division I. This is going to be 3 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, Brock from west of Fort Worth against the Lorena Leopards, uh, a team that Franklin beat in week one. And I got some reports saying Franklin, I mean, from Franklin that said, Lorena has got some big boys and they're nasty. And they're in a state final now. I'm going to take Lorena. I'm going with Brock, you know, as, as, it's hard to, to go away from Brock. They've been, uh, they've, they've been a team on a mission, especially after getting knocked out last year. Okay. Moving right along Four a division two Friday night or Friday afternoon at three Gilmer out of East Texas against China spring. And everybody thought Carthage <laughs> would be right here in this final, but here I mean, we are against yeah, well. The China Springs Cougars, uh, it's not a Cinderella run. When you go 15-0 no. and 0 and you beat Quero by 25 last week, it's not a Cinderella run. And, and well, I think Orange Stark and Carthage yep. before that. Yep. And I think that the resume, that's a good point, Jason. I think China Springs keeps it rolling. I think they win it. Yeah. I can't pick against them. 
as much as I love Gilmer, and uh, they definitely bring a lot of talent to the t- table. But China Spring, and I think his name is Major Bowden, the quarterback. He's uh, whew, he's fun to watch. So put him down as uh, I don't I don't know how big of a prospect he is, but he's a uh, he's a fun one to watch. For a Division One, this one's going to kick us off on Friday. Uh, yeah. There at Arlington AT and T Stadium, Stephenville fifteen and zero against Austin LBJ fifteen and zero. So little preview coming up five A D two. We've got D I S D, and in four A D one we've got Austin I S D. So two inner city schools making the state finals. Like you said, Jason, those are great stories. Um, LBJ's been really close. Uh, they were really close last year and really good. But I like Stephenville's pedigree. I'm going to go with the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, it's hard to go against Stephenville. They finally convinced me after I predicted them to lose to Argyle and Melissa, and uh, they knocked off Hershey last week. But I, I'm rooting for the story. I'm, I, yeah. I'm going with my heart. I'm going heart with pick. LBJ. Yeah. Well, that brings us to 5AD2, where you <laughs> talked about the story of the Sock Golden Bears. But I'll tell you what, Liberty Hill's not a bad story either. Uh, And their offense, they're going to sprint to the line and they're going to go slot T and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. This game's going to be won and lost in the trenches, but I'm riding the fairy tale story of South Oak Cliff. Uh, Give me the Bears. Yeah, um, I got to see um, Liberty Hill knock off a uh, a really good Gilmer team several, several years ago in a windstorm. It was cold as all get out at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. that's uh, there's not going to be that much wind there in uh, in <laughs> AT and T, so I got to go with my <laughs> sock South Oak Cliff man. Uh, that uh, that defense that that all facets of the game they're getting it done, and uh, they uh, coach uh, Jason Todd and and uh, DC Kyle Ward man. Woo. Looking forward to seeing what they do. Five A Division One. It's the College Station Cougars and the Katie Pato Panthers. Katie Pato, 14-1, College Station unblemished at 15-0. Katie Pato in the last round in the state semifinals beats Corpus Christi Flower Bluff 73-14. Here's something a little bit of a uh, factoid, Jason. Oh. Katie Pato is not only a 6A school, they're comfortably a 6A school. Uh, when they go to realignment in uh, next year, they're going to bump up, and they might end up being a 6A D1 team, depending on how their district shapes out. So – I think what I read is they've got about a hundred more kids in their graduating classes than College Station does. I think that's the average, give or take a little yeah. bit. So depth is a concern. Katie Pato is really big and physical, especially on the offensive line. Uh, middle linebacker Alex Kilgore has got some great playoff tape. They've got a lot of really good players, um, and a lot their junior class there at Pato is really mm. strong. I've just known about these College Station kids for so long, and their their quarterback Jet Huff is, this, is Steve Huff, the head coach's son. Mm. He's been running this offense his whole life. These have been the guys he's been running it with since he was in sixth grade. This is the team that has been set up for College Station to repeat as champions for the first time, not repeat, but to win again for the first time since 2017. And as I'm looking out of my house window here in South College Station, I'm about, I don't know, as the crow flies, a half a mile from the school, give me the Cougars. Right. So you can almost run there. Man, oh, I can't make it. Not at all at one time. <laughs> almost, almost. Need yeah. a break. You have a hamburger break in there. Um, <laughs> no bullying. That's me. That's no me. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you get through that region too, and I'm, I'm going to pick you to win state, man. Uh, College Station. Uh, Katie Pato, like you said, they bring it all to the table. Uh, they're a big school. They're going to be moving up, but you can only put eleven on the field at the t- at, at the same time. So uh, I'm going. Uh, I'm going College Station. Six A D two. It's a really good good matchup between two power programs. But like we said off the rip, it's Denton yeah. Guy against Austin Westlake, and I don't see anybody beating the Chaps in the state at all. Give me yeah. Give me Westlake by double digits. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think they uh, they 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 put it on them a little bit, but hey, uh, I think uh, there's a guy named Jackson Arnold who remembers a few years ago when he stepped in against Westlake and he got handed to him a little bit. 
So he may be looking for a little bit. Uh, he may be playing with a little bit of an edge. But it's uh, been yeah, an incredible uh, run. Uh, for he's Austin gonna he's, he's gonna need he's gonna need all the edge he can get. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I think this is. Like, what is this Westlake could be their third state championship in a row in different divisions. It's just yeah incredible well, what Todd yeah, keep an eye doing. keep an eye on those Bowen brothers on the on the deep the guy our defense hey, that defense doesn't get as much run as it should uh, but yeah Westlake uh, I think they just got too much. All right, here's the big one: the three time rematch, Duncanville versus North Shore, six A D one. I picked Duncanville Duncanville when we started the playoffs. And I actually picked them to be playing a Tascacita yeah. uh, in the state championship. I was wrong there. Mm -hmm. And I'm flipping my pick. Oh. After seeing North Shore play, I think I'm going to go with the freshman quarterback in the North Shore defense. As hard as that is for me to do, because I know what Duncanville's got on that roster. Yeah. When you go Jalen Early and Cameron Williams and Malachi Medlock and Amari Abor, and you just keep listing the names off, and uh, it seems like Duncanville's playing – a really good brand of football, but I was super impressed with what North Shore had. They just keep restocking the, the tank and restocking the cupboard uh, for years to come down there on the east side of Houston. So me being a Houston guy, Houston's my city, Dallas is your city. What do you say, Jason, in the biggest game we go head up against each other? Absolutely, man. I'm picking Duncanville, who I wrote off against Southlake <laughs> last week. Um, what they did, that was uh, super impressive on both sides of the ball. Uh, Solomon James doing his thing. Malachi Medlock, I got to see a couple of weeks ago. He is as tough a runner as you will see. He will punish, punish, punish any opposing defense. Um, and uh, you talk about some youngsters. I got two for Duncanville. Uh, you got Colin Simons, defensive lineman, defensive end, linebacker, edge defender guy, um, 2024. 20, he is going to be a monster recruit uh, playing opposite of Omari Abor. He has been getting it done. And then DeCorian Moore, wide receiver, 2025. He's got people buzzing, and he has been lighting it up in the playoffs. So keep an eye on those two guys, and uh, it should be another awesome matchup, awesome head-to-head, -head, you know, just duke it out. Um I, I don't know. We may see another Hail Mary at the end of this one. And, well, uh, and it's pretty incredible. <coughs> it's the yeah. biggest game on the biggest yeah. stage at the biggest schools. There's going to be two freshmen playing key roles on both offenses. Pretty incredible. Pretty wild. Yeah, absolutely. But and, I, I, Duncanville. How about, a name, how about a name for all the Aggies watching this? Okay. Let's see. Trey it. Hardiman. He's a 2025 mm -hmm. running back at North Shore. He is the son of one DeAndre Tiki Hardiman. Ooh. And from talking to some people on the North Shore sideline, he's going to have the juice uh, to get recruited at a high level like his daddy. In fact, um, one of the guys told me that if that kid, even at 15 years old, if he gets some open green grass, nobody's catching him. So uh, interesting name to file away if you're an AM and m fan uh, watching this Texas High School football show and watching the game on Saturday. Jason, this show's been fun. Uh, I'm kind of I'm sad that the season is over. I'm glad that we're cutting this on a Monday night so we can enter all these recruiting phone calls. So for Jason Howell, I'm Ryan Brominger. That's the Texas High School Football Show. Thank you guys so much for joining along all year. Uh, we'll be right back here in August to do our season predictions, and we'll be really wrong again. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, man. Thank you, guys.